Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Tuana Yazja. I'm a space law and political affairs intern for the Space Foundation, a space for women mentee, and a student helicopter pilot. And I, uh, I graduated a year early from university, so I'm finishing up my master's this May before going to law school in the fall. Today, I will be discussing my recently published research, a proposal for the usage of reconnaissance satellites to monitor international human and wildlife trafficking hotspots, published by El Xavier in the journal Acta Astronautica on March 4th, 2022, so exactly a month ago today. You might already be thinking, but aren't there already detection uh, systems in place for human and wildlife trafficking? But my research, as its very short title suggests, is a full proposal to implement an international system to keep countries accountable. Before I get into this proposal, I would like to talk a little bit about why I pursued the expansion of space technologies for the purposes of human rights and animal welfare. As you all know, human and wildlife trafficking occurs at devastating levels all over the world, most without being properly addressed. And I'd like to quickly give a few examples of wildlife trafficking since it's lesser known than human trafficking. Illegal wildlife trade for elephant ivory, pangolin scales, tiger bone, rhino horn, bear bile, and rosewood are done through poachers, traffickers, and highly organized criminal syndicates. And illegal wildlife trade is valued at approximately seven to $23 billion per year, making it one of the most lucrative illegal businesses that fuels criminals and terrorists. I have been trying to find ways to best address these issues since I was very young. Starting at age seven, I wrote and illustrated four children's books on animal rights that were published, donating all profits to various animal charities. I've also created lots of artwork that have been exhibited internationally to raise awareness for these issues. And I actually painted the two artwork that you see up there. As I grew older, I saw the power of law to directly improve the lives of others. And it was permanently etched in my soul. I then made a lifelong commitment to use my creative approach, access to education, and the opportunities that come with it to establish or update powerful preventative laws to ensure governments fulfill our moral obligation to protect all living beings. I thirsted for experiences that would help me approach the question of how the law could create preventative measures for human and wildlife trafficking both global crimes that still have not been allotted enough resources and care despite the international law surrounding them, and bring about an innovative approach to achieving this on a global scale. Now you might be thinking, but doesn't each country have their own laws and ways of detecting human and wildlife trafficking? But since both human and wildlife trafficking take place across borders, with a single trafficking case, possibly involving several countries at once, an international system needs to be implemented to properly monitor and keep countries accountable. We cannot, in good conscience, make technological advancements in space that have the means to track and reduce human and animal suffering and not use them due to geopolitical disagreements. Now, before discussing the main points of my research, I would like to discuss the importance of the changes made to the Kyle Bingman Amendment of 1997. The KBA to the U.S. National Defense Authorization Act had limited the resolution and availability of satellite imagery of Israel to two meters compared to satellite image imaging companies offering images with a resolution of 0.4 to 0.7 meters. The Federal Register then made changes it, to the KBA on July 21, 2020 which allowed U.S. commercial remote sensing companies to sell high-resolution satellite images of Israel at 0.4 meters. These changes to the KBA could create the pathway for other changes to the usage of reconnaissance satellite surveillance and detection of human and wildlife trafficking around the world. I propose that a new structure be implemented to use reconnaissance satellites to monitor human and wildlife trafficking by having hotspot areas for these crimes under 24-hour surveillance, utilizing the highest performance limit. 
A section like the Global Monitoring for Security and Stability could be created under, under the International Telecommunication Union, which would be dedicated to the surveillance. A section like the Global Monitoring for Security and Stability could be created under, under the International Telecommunication Union, which would be dedicated to the surveillance. Global Monitoring for Security and Stability was created in 2004 as part of the Global Monitoring for Environment and Security Program, which was created in 1998 by the European Commission to develop operational information services on a global scale using both space and ground-based monitoring systems in support of environment and security policy needs. Just as how they partnered with research groups to identify these crime hotspots, the section under the ITU modeled, modeled similarly to global monitoring for security and stability, could do the same to determine human and wildlife trafficking hotspots. Under Article 13 of the UN Charter, the General Assembly is empowered to initiate studies and make recommendations regarding inter alia human rights. These studies frequently deal with alleged violation of certain states. Since the Special Pro Procedures, which is a charter-based body under the umbrella of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, reports to the General Assembly on their findings and recommendations, they could be the research group that would study historical data to file recommendations for the section of the ITU. There is not a specific committee dedicated to animal welfare in the UN, but there are international nonprofit organizations that work with the UN that could serve as research groups like World Animal Protection and World Animal Net. If a state fails to address violations in their country, then these cases could be reported to the International Court of Justice by a different state. The ICJ has a symbiotic relationship with the Security Council. The 15-member council seeks to address threats to international security and can recommend that states refer their dispute to the ICJ under Article 36, Section 3 of the UN Charter. The Council Resolution 2388 explains how the failure to properly address national legal systems for human trafficking can make a violation of international law. Therefore, if the ITU informs the states of any violation and they fail to address these violations through their national laws, then the case in question could be brought before the, uh, the Security Council and the ICJ. And the same process can be followed for wildlife trafficking. I can feel some of you thinking, this is all great, but why should the ITU monitor it? They don't even have reconnaissance satellites within their power. And for those of you who did think that, you're all correct. So how can my proposal be implemented within the ITU? The success of this global system is due to its inclusion of 193 member states and a unique number of sectors, making it a prominent agency per to pursue and monitor this proposition. However, before my proposal can be implemented, the ITU governance documents must be amended to expand the functions and competence of the organization. As my proposal fits into the purposes of the telecommunication development sector of the ITU, Article 21, which states the functions and structure of the sector, could be amended to also include reconnaissance satellites, surveillance as part of their competence to protect public safety. Through Article 31, the ITU will be able to legally monitor the surveillance of selected hotspots within their member states. Through Article 25, my proposal could be implemented through a world conference, such as the upcoming World Telecommunication Development Conference that will take place June 6 to 15 in Addis Ababa, where the Sustainable Development Goals will be discussed, which are global goals aligned with my proposal. Now, if you would like to read further into my discussion on how my proposal is aligned with the principles agreed upon by the UN Remote Sensing Principles, the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, principles from the European Convention on Human Rights on Privacy, or read more about national and international laws surrounding human and wildlife trafficking, you can scan this QR code right here, which will take you directly to my journal publication. I just would like to emphasize there are a plethora of ways and opportunities to implement this proposal. I've laid out a structure that can be taken as a starting point, an opportunity to develop into a feasible approach to protecting the inhabitants of this earth. I truly hope that my proposal can bring real change to protecting our people and animals. Thank you. Thank you.